Welcome back to the second of our conversations. We're using this booklet, The Pilgrim Way, and if you've got the booklet in front of you, we're on pages 13 to 18. And uh, if you haven't, don't worry, it still should make good sense to you. We finished last time uh, by uh, asking what we believe, how that impacts upon our lives to give reasons for the hope that's uh, in us. And uh, this second section goes to look at the Lord's Prayer uh, and prayer and worship itself. Um, I'm just going to start by saying, well, why is prayer important to you? Is mm. prayer important to mm. you? I guess I'd start in the place of relationship. Um, I believe we're created to live in relationship with God, with one another, with the whole of creation. And prayer is about my and our relationship with God, which then links me back into that relationship with other people yeah. and with creation. Of course, the Lord's Prayer was uh, Jesus' response to when his friends, his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Um, he then gave them the Lord's Prayer. And it's about praising God. It's about understanding God's will. It's about me acknowledging that I, I get things wrong, that I, I sin, I, I fall short of... Um, of God's ideals, that relationship with God, and yet I'm I'm forgiven and enter more deeply into God's love. And I think for me, prayer is about how I enter uh, more deeply into God's love. Um, for me, I'm fortunate I can start each morning in a quiet place um, and pray and reflect. And of course, scripture is, is at the heart of that. The Bible is very important in, in all of that, listening to God, being honest with God with who I am. But for other people um, who are watching this, who may have really hectic uh, days, perhaps with children, with chaotic households, um, with different things going yep. on. The stuff it, of life. The stuff of life. And it's about how how actually we deepen that relationship with God. We find, I would want to encourage people to find a time yeah. uh, to be with God. And also it's about being aware of God's presence with us um, throughout the day. And of course, it's not just about us individually. It's about what it means when we come together with, with the community of God's people who are all at different stages on their journey. And of course, one of the questions this book asks about is, is Holy Communion as well. So so say a bit more about uh, uh, what it means uh, for you. I think one of the, uh, coming to communion, one of the things I love about the Lord's Prayer is it, it responds into a sense to that deep longing mm. inside of us. Uh, our, our Father in heaven, your kingdom come, mm. your will be done. And that sense of, in, in me, in, in so many people I talk to, of knowing that actually we want life to be different when life is full of challenges, yeah. Um, with, when they, all so many things going on around us, uh, give us today our daily bread, um, forgive us our sins, um, and prayer, which is both individual and then corporate. Uh, and communion, communion, in, in a way, seems to me it's a, it's almost a kind of acting out of the Lord's prayer mm -hmm. in communion. So we come mm -hmm. as we reflect together on the scriptures, which will always shape our worship. Uh, and, and give us a way into understanding God's purposes and love for us. Mm -hmm. And then as we come and, and do and do what Jesus told us to do, uh, very straightforward, very simply said, when, when you meet together, uh, break bread, share, share the cup of wine, and know that I am uh, present with you. Uh, and it's the place in which, uh, for me, in which I encounter Christ crucified and risen, in which I'm changed and then in which I'm sent out mm. as well again yes. uh, and in which which I come to belong uh, with others communion not something that I just simply do on on my own mm. um, even if I happen to be the person who's presiding at the communion service actually the celebration of communion belongs to the whole mm. people of God it is a absolutely corporate activity and actually two words i've been reflecting on a, a lot in relation to holy communion are are the words broken yep. and, and the word nourished um because actually when we gather together uh, around that table i mean communion the eucharist which means thanksgiving the lord's supper lots of different words people use and we gather together uh, around the bread and wine there's a sense that we come from all our very different lives. You and I have got very different stories from, from many other people. And actually everyone is welcome at that table um, because God's love says, come. You know, God actually has that love for every single one of us. And, and when we break bread, um, 
I found that very powerful of being aware of my own brokenness yeah. and yet being fed by God, by Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then as you say, to be sent out and and being sent out to then nourish the world, not, not having a big grin on my face, knowing that in my pain and my joy, I am sent out to to feed God's world. Uh, it, it's almost a moment that kind of brings to tears, I think, mm. in that sense of, of brokenness. We see, we see the brokenness of God on the cross in, in Jesus mm. Christ. Uh, God entering into the absolute pain and misery of our world and our lives sometimes and, and we don't we don't need just to put the television on and look at the news of that that's so much of our a daily experience for so many people mm -hmm. uh, and yet in that brokenness God is present that there is hope um, that we can have confidence in the future in that to know that God is with us as we're sent out to go and be his mm -hmm. God's people in the in, mm. in the world. And actually this little um, section of, of this booklet talks a lot about um, worship. What does it mean to worship together? Um, and for some people that, that word's quite unusual, yeah. not a word we use like the word sin and, and worship and Eucharist and people say those words aren't always very acceptable. And, and part of me wants to say, actually I'm glad we have some vocabulary that is about the mystery of God. Because as we yeah. said in our last session, this isn't about just understanding everything with no. our heads. It's about entering into this immense mystery of God who is so much uh, bigger and greater and other than us. And yet, as I like saying, is closer than close. God's love that draws close uh, to us. And one of the things I want to say to people for whom church is relatively new is, is don't worry about not understanding mm. what the words are. Actually, it's something to be experienced and lived, and, and it, it'll all come as much as it needs to, mm. in, to in time. But just come and, and almost kind of soak it in within mm. that corporate mm. worship. Just be there. Mm. If everybody else is standing up and you're sitting down, frankly, it doesn't matter. No. No. Just come and belong and know that you will receive that welcome. And, and, and in your prayer, just... Uh, asked to be open to God's presence, God coming uh, uh, among us, and hear God's voice speaking to us mm. through through that. And I think that connects back to where we started, which is the Lord's Prayer. Uh, yeah. For some people, those words are very familiar, whether in the old form or the contemporary form. And I really want to encourage people to to go deep with those. I hope people will talk about those because they are words we can just say, and yet. There they are, teaching us to praise God, to know more of who God is, to also, seek God's will, to be forgiven, to enter more deeply into that relationship with God and neighbour in our world. So what would you say to someone who said to you, I really want to pray, but I don't know where to start? And I would say, go to the Lord's Prayer and pray those words. These are the words that Jesus taught us, originally in Aramaic, but go to those words, pray them. And I would also encourage them to say, do you know someone who is a follower of Jesus Christ? Because uh, go and, and be with them. And prayer, if you can talk, if you can communicate in different ways, then that's actually what prayer is about. We're communicating with God who loves us. That, that seems a great place to, to stop this conversation. Next time we're going to talk about uh, actually how our prayer and our worship and our faith influences how we live. But sometimes it's good just to stop and to rest in God mm. and say the Lord's Prayer quietly together. Use the text in front of you. Um, not so many of us know it off by heart in the way that we used to these days. That's quite all right. Uh, and then rest in God with that.